Chapter 33 Make Meditation an Obsession Maharaj, it is very easy, but at the same time it is very difficult. What is meditation? If somebody abuses you, someone insults you, you will say, I am going to get revenge. How dare he? Where is that man? And for the next 24 hours, you will be thinking of that particular man who has insulted and abused you. You feel fiery, you are fired up, incensed and want to get back at him. You are absorbed in ways of doing this. Similarly, you need to have the same fire and passion with the meditation. All the time, for 24 hours a day, you are trying to find out who you are. You are determined and obsessed with self-discovery. Your involvement is very deep and absolute. You need to find out who you really are at any cost. Nothing is going to stop you. Each and every cell in your body is on fire with what that abusive person has said. I'll show him. I will get revenge. Questioner, with every fibre of your being? Maharaj, yes. Your entire body is boiling. You can only focus and concentrate on this one thing. This is meditation. Questioner, I see. We have to be completely involved because we have a lifetime of these impressions, like scripts that keep saying, I am Chris, with all the associations and baggage that comes along with Chris. So I will have to work at it continuously and be one-pointed. What you are saying, Maharaj, is that it has to be a full-time pursuit. Maharaj, all these great saints, pointing to the pictures on the wall, were all advancing meditation. Questioner, and what about meditating while walking or whatever? Maharaj, you don't have to sit to meditate. Meditation can be practised while you are working, relaxing, at any time, anywhere. Reciting will continue by itself. It will continue by itself. The meditation will continue in the background. Spirit is very sensitive. Whatever is impressed on it is reflected. Remember that you are doing all this meditation for yourself, for your benefit, not for the Master's. Casual spirituality will not work. Part-time involvement, no. Absolute and complete self-involvement is needed. Then you will notice dramatic changes happening in you. Meditation just means concentrating on the concentrator. In this way, you are staying with selfless self at all times. Questioner. I have a question about the devotional aspect of the meditation. Maharaj. In the beginning, there is not really devotion. Here, devotion means surrendering and accepting. What is needed is non-stop devotion. Devotion is sacrifice. I want to know myself. I want to know who I am. Questioner. So, as well as fighting and struggling, you are also surrendering? Maharaj. Yes. Because in order to remove this body knowledge, to come out of body knowledge, devotion is needed. It is a deliberate act. At the initial stage, you see yourself as a devotee. In order to reach ultimate truth, you are to undergo devotion. First of all, you are a devotee. Then you undergo devotion, practicing, meditating. After devotion, you can realise the deity. Therefore, the movement is one from devotee to devotion to deity. But remember that these are only words. Don't fall into the trap of taking the words literally. In reality, there is no devotee, no devotion, no deity. Questioner. I understand that now, but I have to keep reminding myself because the mind has the habit of grasping. 
and I am aware of occasionally saying to myself, I've got it. I'm trying not to do this. It is tricky too because the whole subject area you are talking about, ultimate reality that we are, has no language. It is prior to language, prior to everything. Maharaj, when you come here as a devotee, as a devotee, you say, I want to know myself. I want to know who I am. The Master has said, you are ultimate truth. But you're not having faith in the Master because of the long association with the body. Your faith, your trust is wavering, shaky, not firm. There is no stability. You are told by the Master that you are Brahman, Atman, Paramatman. You are to recite the mantra so that this reality can penetrate and be absorbed. Questioner, to go back to what I was saying earlier about language, if we created the words which are all illusion, how can these words that we recite work or have any real and lasting effect on us? Maharaj, yes, the words are illusion, but again, we have to use one illusion to erase another. I am Brahman, replacing I am man. Considering the sensitiveness of your spirit, what you impress on that spirit is reflected. Questioner, so it definitely works. Maharaj, of course, as long as you have total self-involvement. 100%. It is a well-proven scientific systematic method. Ultimate truth is being impressed in you through the mantra and then you will know, oh, so I am that. There will be exceptional silence, exceptional spontaneous silence will be there. Questioner, that sounds wonderful. Maharaj, where all thoughts end, there you are. In the thoughtless stage, even I also ends. There is no I, no you. But this state is not an unconscious state. Though you are living in the body, you are fully and completely separate from it, unaware of the world. I am placing before you the listener's truth, your truth, you can do it, have some courage, nothing is impossible. There is no difference between the speaker in me and the listener in you, except for the body form. Now you are to convince yourself. Open facts have been placed before you. You have the key, now you have to operate it. The dishes have been served. Now eat.